All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, when we get started, we're going to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rechav Kadash. We want to send double honor to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone, who well, peace, love, and safety to the elect. The hearty Shalom to you, few sincere women out there subscribing to the, the truth, all right, the true doctrine of Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, all right. This is the brother you call him up. The brother Karazza. The brother Yatazakba. And we're from the Great Millstone, Nebraska camp, coming back with another lesson, Lord willing, to feed and to edify the lost sheep of the nation of Israel through the Holy Spirit. Rakhak Wadash. Right now, uh, we wanted to get into this quick lesson, man. As you see by the title, the Lord hath preserved us. Right? And this is really, really what we want to get into is how there was going to be a point in time where this truth, it was going to come to the forefront. We were going to be able to. Uh, receive this truth and understand this truth and proclaim this truth. Okay. And um what really this really stems from uh we you know a study that we were going into, which you know we'll start with that precept in uh, the book of Revelation 9, verse 4. Okay, and uh we'll we'll give the sense to it then, okay, because um like I mentioned, this truth is always gonna come out. The most high had to proclaim that this truth was going to be proclaimed in these last days. So uh Hey, without further ado, we can get into the scriptures and the Lord willing to say is edifying. This is Revelation chapter 9 and verse 4. It says, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of the Most High in their forehead. Right. So we were going into this chapter, you know, and this is a very uh, important part. A uh, very important scripture that the brother put the light on is how you know you had certain men back then, certain Israelites back then that that fought in that that um that war back then, World War One. Okay, and some men were preserved. Okay, and some of those men that were preserved and they made it home from that battle, they had kids, their kids had kids. Okay, and uh, eventually it led up to the time of the Great Awakening, as they call as we call it, right where you had the truth come out. Like around what the 1969, like the 1970s, okay. And now, what do you have today? You have this truth flourishing from that point in time, okay. So those men, the Most High, preserved particular men, particular Israelites back then, that we may be able to receive this truth now, okay. Okay. So um, yeah, we can move on to the next one, brother. Unless you had something you want to speak on it. No, nah, no. Nah, I mean, you hit the head, the nail pretty much on the head, you know. Go ahead. This is Psalm chapter 32, verse 7. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from the trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of, of deliverance. Say right. And that, that first the, the first part co correlating with you know, something I said um not too long ago, you know, is you had men that were preserved from the trouble. They were able to make it out. Okay. They were able to make it out of a um a treacherous situation for lack of a better word, man. Okay, and then this was this was not by coincidence. No, none of none of the things that the heavenly Father does is by coincidence. He's the master chess player, man. So when he had these particular men preserved from that hurt back then, preserved from that trouble, it was for a reason. Okay, well, you go ahead, bro. Yeah, it's like the brothers going into World War One was, you know, <clears throat> it was hell <laughs> just to put it plain. And you had a lot of people dying, a lot of gruesome injuries, a lot of sicknesses, you know, and for you to, to make it out and make it out with your faculties was, you know, almost unheard of. Because as we went to, you know, the studies, people had PTSD and uh, shell shock. You're not making no kids after that, you know. But for these men to go through all these, go through that war and to be able to make it out, the Lord preserved them, you know, to pass that seed. Go ahead. This is Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 4. Can we, did we finish that up? Uh, nah. Psalms. Psalms, 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 Psalms. Psalms chapter 32, verse 7. Thou art my hiding place, thou shalt preserve me from the trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance, Selah. 
done. Hey, you know, so yeah, that's that pretty much like we, we spoke on it. The most high preserved men. He preserved particular men in that time. And that's a good point that brother made because he saw some of the pictures, even some of the pictures of those people that made it out of that war. They were all jacked up, man. Mentally, physically, right? <laughs> to the point where you know some of them were uh didn't even want to live. But you had men that the most high had Israelite men, the most high preserved their mental. Okay, for you no, know, I'll say their mental because they were they were able to uh you know they were able to <laughs> produce. They were still able to produce, they were still able to have children. I'll say the physical as well, but since I made that point. And they were able to, you know, uh eventually that truth was gonna come out through the loins of those men. Okay. God. Move up to the next. Yeah. God, this is uh Ezekiel chapter nine and verse four. It says, And the Lord Yahweh said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Right now, this this scripture, you know, is is talking about this day and they, well, the times to come, because there's gonna be that that mark. That is spoke of the Hebrew word is the wah, which means what exemption from judgment. Okay, now it's particularly speaking about the judgment to come, but that can correlate with back then too. The Most High preserved though He put the wah on those men. They were they were exempt from uh, judgment, at least the judgment that most of those individuals back then got. Right, like the brother made a good point. They kept, they had all their faculties. Right, that's that's <laughs> that's a blessing, man. Through your halbashim, I was shot. Right, so it's the same uh, going back then. The Most High said that the wild on those men. You go ahead, bro. Come. It says, um, it's kind of says, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Right, and that and that's that part right there is why how we can correlate it with today is because you know you have the men today, the the, uh, the men of the Lord today, they're sighing and crying for the things that are going on. All right, the abominations done by the by the uh, the wicked one being Esau, Edom. Okay, all the uh, uh, the treachery that's done in Babylon the Great and amongst these heathen these heathen nations, the, you have these Israelite men that are signing the crime. Okay, but hey, in order for those men in this day and age to sigh and cry, now those men back then had to be preserved. Uh, okay, kind of like when you read Matthew one, you know. And it goes from, uh, it gives the, the genealogy of Yahweh Shai. You know, all those men had to be preserved for a certain period of time to pass seed in order for Yahweh Shai to be born. And it's the same with, in these times, you know, these these men had to be preserved to pass seed. God. So, um, just like it. Get into Psalm chapter 139 and verse 14. So like in verse 13, it says, For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Amen. And that's a marvelous work. <laughs> you know, as we will keep referencing back to, you know, because the brother made, made a good point, is that World War One was was the war the war to end all wars right it was a it was a, one of the bloodiest wars that you no know, america's ever seen okay that the world's ever that seen the, that the world's ever seen you know so that's a that was a marvelous work in itself for the most high to bring men out of that man okay you go ahead my substance was not hid from thee when i was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written. And what would that substance be? It would be the men of the Lord today, right? The men that came through the loins of these these uh, uh men that were preserved back then, man. Okay, the Most High, the most hey, how they always say in the world, the Most High don't make no mistakes, right? The Most High don't make no mistake. He knew what he was doing when. When, uh, in this process of uh, keeping these men in the, in the right set of mind and keeping them able to uh, to reproduce, the Most High knew what He was doing. Okay, all right. And what did He say earlier in there? He said He had uh, preserved my reins. If I'm wording it correctly, God says, "For thou possessed my reins." God. Okay, God. Okay. No, I thought it said preserved. So yeah, it's a lot to get to that. 
kind of kind of continue on. Says that thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. So like the members, not, not the substance, but the members were those men teaching the day. So so the, I'll retract that statement. So lock you for that. The members. Read that again, Bible Basha. Quran says, Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it'd be, <laughs> that, that's, those, those members were those men that you see today. Starting to going back to the, 19, the late 1960s, the early 1970s, the generation, generation up to now. Okay, those were the members. Okay, no, they were not because these men had to be born. The prophets of the Lord had to be born. They did. Hey, listen, can we just can we get that? The Corinthians? Did I have that after or was that? No? Yeah, uh, I just want to. Can you read in the NLT real quick? That uh, verse? God, just that verse or? Yeah, 16. Okay, verse 16, Psalms 139, 16 in the NLT. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book, every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Yeah, so it was really just speaking about, you know, the progression of life, you know, uh, his members being like the, the day in the day in and day out, you know, of life. Okay. But um going into what, what the brother was saying, um we were born, you know, it wasn't this this wasn't by chance that we were born. You know, the Lord preserved us after being born. He he saw our life. He preserved our life day in, day out, day in, day out. It was like it says, it was recorded like a book, you know. Um, and all books have what a beginning, a middle, and an end. You know, and our story was written as the scripture says that the uh, the elect were ordained from the beginning. So this life that we're living right now. It's only but a page in our whole story. You know what I mean? Our story was written thousands of years ago when when the, the elements were coming together with Yahweh Shai, Lord's will. You know? Our story was written when we were uh, you know being being taken up out of Egypt and getting into the promised land. Our story was being written in you know 70 AD when you know the Romans came down. Our story, that's all part of our story, you know, and our forefathers in these times surviving that World War One, that's still part of our story. Hey, yeah, hey, call your Hey, just cause, because it said uh, in the book of Second Ezra 9, the Most High had these men preserved from the beginning of time. You know, just, just a land back off what you were saying. Yeah. You know. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 32. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Right. And the reason why we brought this out, going back to it, these prophets had to be born generation after generation. The Most High said what? From the beginning, he had prophets set out. And he said, in the last days, there will be prophets that will, that will be bringing forth this life via the truth. So, hey, I'll say this, the Most High is not a liar. So had those men, let's say, hypothetically weren't preserved, that would make the Most High a liar. Right? So those men had to be born. This, Once again, the Most High, a master chess player, not a coincidence. He set it up to where these same prophets that were back then, back in Egypt, all right, maybe during the times of uh, with Moses, okay, Noah, these same spirits will be rekindled back into the earth in the last days, which we're living in the last of the last days now. Okay, so you have prophets now teaching because the Most High had men preserved that they would, so these men that are teaching now would be born and push this truth. Okay. So they the spirit, they said the spirit of the prophets are subject unto the prophets. They're back in their stands today. Okay. And it, hence this is how we are preserved via through this truth, man. Okay. Yeah. 
So, uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. If y'all brothers had any closing statements? No. Okay. Hey, Connor will say, hey, Lord willing, that was edifying. We want to give all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Unto to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, 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 by Hashem